Open your math notebook and title your next page, Multiplying by 10 and Tens. You'll take your own notes on the following information. Remember, you can pause and rewind as needed. Solve the following problem. 5 times 10. 5 times 10 equals 50. We know that when a whole number is multiplied by 10, a zero is added to the whole number. That is because the number becomes 10 times larger. So each digit is moved to the next higher place value. To do this, we add a zero to the ones place and move the five to the tens place. Now considering this information that we learned in the beginning of the year, pause the video and give your best shot at applying that same information to five tenths times 10. Five tenths times 10 equals five. When a decimal is multiplied by 10, the digits are also moved to the next higher place value. As a result, the decimal point has moved one place to the right, and each digit is now 10 times as much as it used to be. So once again, the decimal point has moved one place to the right because we are multiplying it by 10, and we need that number to be 10 times what it used to be. Let's solve a few problems together. Copy each one into your notebook. In our first problem, we are multiplying 1 tenth times 10. So the answer must be 10 times as much as 1 tenth. Let's take a look at a visual representation of this problem. We have 1 tenth and we want to multiply it by 10, which means we want 10 1 tenths. So here are 10 1 tenths. If we add them all up, we have 10 tenths. We know that we can simplify 10 tenths and it is equal to one. So one tenth times 10 equals one, or one is 10 times as much as one tenth. Let's take a look at another problem, but this time we're going to solve one hundredth times 10 and we're going to look at another visual representation. So let's look at 10 groups of 1 hundredths. Here, if I add up all my 1 hundredths, we end up having 10 hundredths. If I simplify 10 hundredths, we end up with 1 tenth. I can write 1 tenth as a decimal, and it comes out as 0 0.1, which is also read as 1 tenth. So 1 hundredth times 10 equals 1 tenth. Let's look at one last problem. This time it's 1 thousandth times 10. And again, we're going to look at a visual representation. So I'm going to show you 10 1 thousandths. And if I were to write that as a fraction, we add them all up, we have 10 1 thousandths. We can simplify that and it would be 1 hundredth which we can write as a decimal as 0 0.01, which is also read as 1 hundredth. So 1 thousandth times 10 equals 1 hundredth. So if you take a look at each one of these problems and look at the answer and compare it to the factor that it all started with, we can see that the decimal place when multiplying by 10 is moved one place to the right because the number is getting 10 times bigger. So in our first problem, 1 tenth times 10, the decimal place moved one place to the right to get an answer of one. In our second problem, 1 hundredth times 10, the decimal place moved one place to the right to make it 10 times bigger, and we got an answer of 1 tenth. And in our last problem, 1 thousandth times 10, we moved the decimal place one place to the right to make it 10 times larger, and our answer is 1 hundredth. Now watch me solve a few. Seven times 10, we know is 70. We know that we're going to add a zero to the ones place, move our seven to the tens place so that the seven is 10 times larger. But let's talk about how that fits in with today's lesson. We also know that seven is the same as 7.0000 and the zeros can go on and on and on forever. And it still has the same value. 
So when we are multiplying 7 times 10, the decimal place is actually moving one place to the right, just like we learned previously. However, in a whole number, there's always a zero in the tenths place, right? There is no decimal. So we always have a zero in the tenths place, which is why we add a zero to the end of the number. So our answer to 7 times 10 is in fact 70, but we are still moving that decimal place one place value to the right. Now let's take a look at another one that is a decimal times 10. 13 and 29 hundredths times 10. Once again, we want this number to be 10 times larger, so we're going to want to move the decimal place one place value to the right, and 13 and 29 hundredths times 10 equals 132 and 9 tenths which is 10 times larger than 13 and 29 hundredths. Now let's take a look at one last one, 23 hundredths times 10. We're going to want to move our decimal point one place to the right so that each digit moves up one place value, making the number 23 hundredths 10 times bigger. So when we move the decimal place to the right, making it 10 times bigger, the answer is 2 and 3 tenths. Now I want you to solve the following problems in your notebook. Make sure to write neatly so we can go over them tomorrow. Great job. Make sure that you wrote down each of those problems along with your answer and we'll go over the answers in class tomorrow.